there's a lot of talk about self-care. And I really actually kind of hate that phrase, self-care, because I hate the way it's used. Uh, hate's a really strong word, but really dislike the way uh, self-care is uh, preached and taught online um, as a way of like, you got to take care of yourself. You know, you got to brush your hair, take a shower, put clothes on. And um, that, that should be like standard operating procedure. That's called like personal hygiene, right? <laughs> like get out of bed, get dressed, put some clothes on, put makeup on. I don't care if anybody's going to see you or not today. That changes the way you show up in your life. It changes the way you show up in your home. It's a whole nother thing. But when we start talking about self-care, um, this is really more about self-reflection, learning about who you are, what your needs are, what triggers you, um, what puts you into discouragement, what puts you into overdrive, stress, overwhelm, worry, anxiety, all of the, that's real self-care, getting real dialed into who you are, what you need, and what has, what has the ability to threaten your like maximum operating potential. Okay. So here we are, and I'm going to make some assumptions. I'm going to make some assumptions about what your life is like because I scroll Facebook enough um, to see that many of you are like me. I've got my office right now. Everything looks put together, right? But you open up that door and you don't know what those conversations have been out there. You don't know about what that vibe is like. You don't know the state of the house, right? Like, and we're all living in this new state, this new normal, which is not normal for anybody. And here comes this term self-care, like take a long bath. Well, a long bath isn't going to do anything with you if you aren't using that time to reflect on um, what fills me up, what drains my energy, and then adjust your day and your life accordingly. And this is really important right now because everybody's up in your grill right now, right? So if you start to take stock of like what makes you anxious, what's making you anxious, what makes the worry meter go up, what tends to drain your energy, and most likely this is the news, most likely this is like the sources of media that you're reading in your social media profile, you know, most likely this is conversations with certain individuals in your life that tend to breed more fear and angst. I want you to ask yourself each and every time you unplug from something today, every time you turn the TV off, do I feel better because I turned it on and watched it or do I feel worse? Every time you hang up the phone, FaceTime, ask yourself, do I feel better because I interacted with this person or do I feel worse? And your body's going to tell you if this is a healthy space for you to be spending your time in, a healthy dialogue for you to be engaging in or not. But what I've been talking a lot with my clients is this, this topic of beacons, of beacons. Those of you that are here in my audience and my group, um, you're all beacons. And I know that because you are using social media to create um, an audience, to create a platform for yourself, to speak into the hearts and minds of an audience that is getting value from you, they're getting motivation from you, they're getting teachings from you. Um, you are an influencer, which makes you a beacon. And what I mean by that is, you are charged now with the energy of the people who engage with you, whether they're just scrolling your newsfeed or your stories or whatever. But to be a beacon, and, and here's the thing, and I always tell my clients, you may be the only beacon of positivity and light that your audience gets when they scroll through Facebook this afternoon. Think about that. Because many, many people are in a dark place. Many, many people don't know how to get themselves out. Many, many people don't know how to pivot change and move in life differently. So you may very well be the only beacon of light that many people in your audience ever get in a day. And I take that responsibility um, greatly, which means I can't afford to go dark. I can't afford to be set back. I can't afford to allow messages, conversations, um, activities to drain my energy because I got to show up here, right? And uh, same thing is for you. So when we start to talk about self-care for the beacons, self-care isn't a long bath. Like that's just a long bath. You have to sit in it. You know, um, 
self-care isn't doing your hair and makeup. It's, it's the things of knowing exactly what's going to build you up and create the energy so that when you show up, you can uplift other people in your audience versus what are the things that make me want to shut down, turn off, run for the hills and say goodbye to this whole social influence thing, right? <laughs> okay. So I want you to take self-care seriously. Just take it more seriously. It is not just go paint your nails, girls. It's not just, uh, you know, I'm going to eat this handful of peanut M&Ms because I deserve it. That's not self-care. It could very much be self-sabotage. People want to say, well, what's the best morning routine? What should I be doing? How should I set up my morning? Right. So I blah, blah, blah. But it, it's really not about like how other people's routines are. It's what are the routines that you need that help you be energized for the work that you're set out to do. And that's the work of caring for little people in the other room. It's the care of your spouse and how to keep them elevated and positive. It's how to foster healthy relationships and it's how to show up in your um, social media driven influential life. What is that series of things that you do upon waking up that helps you create an exceptional day. So for me, I know I'm going to feel a lot better about myself. When I feel a lot better for myself, I show up differently. If I get up, I shower, I do my hair, my makeup. I don't care if anybody's going to see me today. Um, but mama going to be dressed and look like she's got no, got somewhere to go. Right. And we joke like, I mean, let's be honest here. Like, you know, the bottom is I'm at home, but I'm set up to show up and feel and feel like the professional I am. And a routine can be different day by day, but there's, there's different stages. Like when, when I wake up, first thing I do is go brush my teeth. Even if I'm going to lay in the bed a little bit longer, because it's just, it's just a note to myself. You're awake. Start acting like it. Right. And then I get a glass of water then I have some coffee, then I sit down and I plug out a little bit of work, then I go check on my family. So the routine isn't always like power, 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 right? Like people think I got to meditate and then I've got to have that hot cup of lemon water and then I've got to go and exercise and then I've got to, you know, read 30 minutes and then I got to journal 30 minutes. Some mornings that's going to serve you. And I always say like, think of a morning routine like a, um, like a toolbox. Okay. Um, you've got a toolbox of different tools you use for different things, right? You've got a hammer, you've got a screwdriver, you got a set of pliers, you know, you've got a level and some days, uh, you wake up and a nail needs to put, put in the wall. So you're not going to pull the screwdriver. You don't need it this morning. You don't need it this morning. You need the hammer, right? And it's the same thing with a morning routine. I have like, uh, you know, a, a collection of activities that I may choose to do in a morning that are going to lift me and prepare me for the day. Journaling has always been a really power powerful activity for me, especially when I'm struggling. But there's some mornings when I don't need that tool. I don't need to pull that tool out of the toolbox. I actually don't need it this morning to elevate my energy. What I need is a longer bath. Um, what I need is breakfast or what I need is uh, time with my kids or, and so each morning may be different, but you have this collection of things that you know are actually going to increase energy power, um, um, you know, increase and elevate your mood. And then there's other things that aren't. And so make sure you, you know what it is. This is self care. This is self care. How do I care for this being who is charged with being beacon in the world? And what you need is going to change day by day because we're humans and energy is different every day. And, and let's face it, the world is different every day. What is most important for you in this time frame? For me, it's creating a safe house for everybody. And that's for stress levels. Um, that's for interactions. That's for relationships. Um, my goal is we all come out of this stronger. I've got a stronger marriage. My kids and I have stronger relationships. Us as a family um, come out of this going, this was one of the most fun times um, in my child's 
memories in my child's um, um, history. Okay. That's priority. Second priority is that my business grows. Um, I don't want to coast and I certainly don't want to backslide. Um, I want to grow. And part of that is because I want to prove to my clients and my audience that it doesn't matter what's going on around you. It doesn't matter. Um, what matters is what you put effort into is what's going to grow. So I'm going to grow my relationships in this home and I'm going to grow my business. Mm -hmm.